Hi, welcome back. I'm Brandi Schmidt. I am the owner and instructor at Repose LLC. You can find us on Facebook um, and now on OCTV. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we're having a basic yoga class. This is for all levels of practice. If you've never done yoga before, you're in the right spot. I just like to remind everyone that you need to honor your body's limitations. If there's anything that we show you or offer suggest and it's just not right for you, sit it out. Do a posture that is right for you or just do part of a posture. My intention and the real heart of Repose was just to get everyone in the community, no matter where you're at, in your physical life, in your age, in your capabilities, that we get just a little more movement and feel better about ourselves and leave feeling that we're better than when we came. So thank you for joining us in Leonard, Michigan. I hope you enjoy the class. I'm Melanie. I'm here with Canine Stray Rescue League. Um, I've been with the rescue about five and a half years. Um, I'm the foster coordinator here. Uh, I volunteer as well as I'm a board member. It's hard to get a good read on the dog and it's hard to tell sometimes that a dog is a great dog when they're stuck in the kennel environment living on a concrete slab. And it's nice when they go into foster care because we can get a little bit better feel of who they are as a dog and then we can find a better fitting home for them. We can learn if they do well with dogs or people or kids, cats for that matter. Cats in particular are really difficult for us here because we don't have cats on site. So if you do become a foster with us. We do provide everything so it's not any expense to you. We'll provide you with the things that you'll need such as a cage, food, if you need doggy bowls. Um, you know, we have support for you as well. So if you are interested in becoming a foster, uh, email us at caninestrayrescue at yahoo.com and we will put you in touch with me and uh, we'll see if you're a good fit for fostering with us. Good morning, welcome to Repose again. I'm Brandi Schmidt, I'll be your instructor. And today's class is for our back, I'm working the middle to low back here. And we're just gonna take a moment to get started in a seated position. Bring your intentions inward. Soften the eyes, soften the face. And any time you're preparing for yoga at home, it might be nice to dim some lighting, maybe light a candle, put on some soft music, whatever's going to help you relax into that moment. So we're in the middle of balance, balancing strength and serenity. So stretching and lengthening as well as strengthening. And that's what we're gonna focus on today with our back. You might want to make sure you can hear me from home, but you really don't need to look at the television or your screen on your computer. You want to just relax into it and follow the words, which is often overlooked in yoga. It is more about um, training our mind as well as training our listening and intuitively following what works for your body, not necessarily what it looks like when I do it. So just taking a few more deep breaths in, let the belly and chest rise. Lengthening the exhale through the nostrils. Always wanna bring the focus back to breathing through the nose when possible. Our nostrils help to warm the air, clean the air, and it actually creates an antiviral environment within the nose. So. Breathing through the mouth is not desirable. And from here, just taking a few seated cat and cows, meaning we 
pull the chest forward, inhale, let the head come back, and exhale as we round the back, tuck the chin in. A few more to your own breath. This just helps to warm up the spine. Start to move the fluid throughout the body. And then we're gonna make our way onto a plank position on our hands and knees here. So you might just stay on the hands and knees if you're able to curl the toes under and come into this plank, holding this for a few breaths. And again, the knees can be down. And then slowly lower the chest down, relax the toes, and set the chin on the mat. Hold this for a few breaths. It might feel funny to you. We're just gonna ease into lowering down onto the belly. Settle in and rest the head. Just tilt the head to one side. Start to relax the arms down to the side here. Feel the movement of the body as you breathe in deeply. And slowly exhale. On your next inhale, just start to look straight forward. You know, press the pelvis, the hip bones into the mat. Start to pull the navel towards the spine. Arms are gonna start to reach back here as we lift the head and chest. We really do not want to tilt the head up. We're trying to keep the spine in line and really work the low back, pressing the feet and hips into the mat, really pulling up with the arms. And the palms can be up or down here. Continue to breathe deeply as we hold this, working that mid back. And as you practice this more at home, you might find you can hold it for longer periods of time. For now, we're gonna exhale lowly, lower, lowering slowly onto the mat. Start to bring the hands forward here. We're gonna bring the hands behind the head, not on the neck, but cradling the head down. Let the forehead, the third eye, come down into the mat. Start to walk the elbows up towards the head. And on your inhale, we start to lift again, pressing the hips, pressing the feet into the floor, really pulling those elbows forward, keeping the neck in line, continuing to breathe, working that back. And again, the more we practice this, the longer we'll be able to hold it. On your next exhale, go ahead and lower down. Take a few breaths of rest. Maybe you turn your head the opposite direction just to get some movement in the neck. And when you're ready, reaching those arms out overhead, bringing the head back to center, pressing the forehead or that third eye into the ground. Start to press the hips and pelvis down. Start to pull the navel into the spine, lifting the arms, head and shoulders, working the back. Maybe the legs lift on this one. Feel the body rock as we deeply inhale, fill the belly and the lungs. Exhale, squeeze the belly towards the spine. Stay focused. One more and relax it all down slowly to the mat. Bringing the hands under the shoulders. Start to curl the toes under, pressing the knees into the mat. The bottom starts to lift. 
chin rests on the mat, pull those elbows towards one another. On your next inhale, lift head and chest. Exhale, hips come back, relax the feet. We're gonna melt down into child's pose with the knees together. Tuck the head in. We might use the arms as a pillow here, resting the head on the hand. If you're able to go a little lower, maybe the hands go to the side and the head goes all the way down. Really breathing into the back in this pose, keeping the knees underneath us rather than spread wide in a traditional child's pose is allowing us to breathe and lift that whole back and then relax that whole back all the way down through the neck and chin. Start to inhale, looking forward, walking up. And bring the hands behind you gently. Inhale as you lift the chest. Let the head just fall back here. Start to fall down onto the palms. And maybe you're able to lift the knees, stretching the top of the feet. We're just relaxing into the other part of the back here. Stretching through the front of the neck. Start to bring the knees down again if you were able to lift them. Walking the hands back into a tabletop position. From here, going into a full cat and cow, inhaling as we lift the chin, looking up, drop that belly, really push the tailbone towards the sky. Exhale as you tilt the pelvis in, round the back, tuck the chin, really push into the shoulders. Walking the hands a little closer to the knees will allow us to press a little more deeply here. So depending on which part of the back or shoulders is giving you trouble, this might give you more relief. Continue a few more to your own breath, inhaling as you look up. Exhaling as you round the spine. On the next inhale, start to curl your toes under. Prepare to lift into downward facing dogs. So we start to straighten the legs, bottom rises, head drops between the arms. Knees can be bent any amount here. As you practice this more, you start to drop the feet towards the earth more. Heels start to come down. And again, if the mobility is different, um, you're not able to do this from a floor level, just leaning forward onto a countertop or a chair and dropping that head between the arms will help get you some relief similar to this. Inhale as you look up at the hands, we're gonna bring those knees back down. And then come bring the knees forward or swinging them around so you come to a seat again. Take any seated position that's okay for you. Maybe it's even in a chair. We can cross the legs or bringing one ankle on top of the knee. Start to bring one arm up overhead. We're gonna start with the right for today's practice. Bending at the elbow, bringing the hand behind the back, and then bringing that left arm around the back and reaching for the opposite hand. I'll turn around so you can see in the camera. If we're not able to reach the opposite hand, which is common for most of us, using a belt or even a hand towel in grabbing that behind the back, you take it with one hand, drop it behind the back and grab it with the other and really pull those elbows in towards center.
slowly releasing, stretching the arms out to the side, and then bringing the opposite hand, bending the elbow. Continue to breathe into it. Slowly release those arms, reaching both out to the side for some relief and let them come down gently. From here, we're just gonna roll onto the back. So you maybe bring the knees up, feet come out and just supporting the back of the legs. Gently roll back, tuck those knees into the chest. Just start to rock side to side, little back massage here. Putting a hand on top of the knees, start to roll the knees to the right and away from the body. Then slowly bringing them to the left and in towards the chest again. Exhales, the knees come in. Inhales, they pull away. Do a couple of rotations and then switching sides. Moving now into the left, inhales, you pull away. Exhales, you bring those knees in. We always wanna do the same thing to one side as we do the other, keeping it balanced. You'll find throughout your day that you tend to favor one side of your body, um, just depending on if you're right or left-handed, maybe you're using one arm, then we lean more to that side and this can throw off the back. So really bringing awareness to how we stand, how we lean, and trying to balance that out throughout the day. Go ahead and lift the feet up towards the sky, flexing and pointing. Maybe just squeezing the back of the legs, getting some of that lymphatic fluid to move. It's always good to elevate the feet throughout your day at any point. Maybe you're resting on the couch, watching television. Just brings that blood flow to the heart, increases or improves circulation. Start to bring the knees back in. Let both knees fall to the right side. Gentle twist of the spine here. The arms can be out open, or maybe you put the hands on the chest or belly. Trying to look over the opposite shoulder. If that's not okay for your neck, go wherever is comfortable and is okay for the neck. a reminder to keep that breath in and out through the nostrils. Deeply inhale, let the chest and belly rise. Slow exhales, you let it out. Pulling the belly in. And then bringing the knees back up to center. Maybe just rock side to side another moment here. Maybe you need to stretch them out again. Do what feels right for you, whatever you need. And then let them fall to the left. And again, attempting to turn the head over the opposite shoulder. Never required, just a suggestion. The hands can go wherever. When you're ready, bringing the knees back to center once more. Bring the feet up here. And then we're gonna bring the feet down to the mat about hip width apart. Hands come face down. Inhale deeply, creating an arch of the back, a little gap from the floor. Exhale as we flatten the back, tilting the pelvis. 
two more to your own breath, inhaling as we create that arch. Exhaling as we flatten it against the earth, tilting the pelvis in. Squeeze the belly. On this last one, we're gonna hold the back flat on the mat. Inhale, start to lift the hips up into a bridge pose. Maybe you're able to tuck the shoulders under the, black, under the back. And the hands might be palm down. You might reach for the opposite hand and pull away from the body. Just pulling the hips and belly up towards the sky. Holding it here, but not holding the breath. Continue to breathe deeply. Actively pulling the knees in towards one another, pushing the hips up. It's easy to let it start to fall. And slowly start to release the hands. Release the shoulders out from under the back. One vertebrae at a time, we lower down. Stretching the left leg up towards the sky. Start to pull it in towards the body here. You might bend it a little bit, depending on what your flexibility is. And then slowly switching to the other leg. Breathing through the tightness. If you're really tight, maybe we're shaking a little bit. That's normal. Trying to tell that muscle to relax and release. And slowly release it back down. Start to stretch out the legs here. Hands come down to the side, palms open. And in any yoga practice, we like to end in Shavasana. We don't always have time in the video. So any practice that you take online or with us, you want to take a moment to just relax it all down. Palms open. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Let it all out the mouth. <sighs> Melt into the mat. Check in with the body from the toes up the legs. Notice any tension you're still holding on to encourage the feet to fall open, the glutes relax. The breath becomes natural, not forced. The chest becomes light. The fingers are soft. Shoulders relax in. Maybe you take a moment to set an intention for yourself. Something positive that we want to work towards. My intention for today's practice is finding that balance Finding awareness throughout your day into how you're holding your posture, or your stance, balancing it out. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Evan Carr. I'm in AmeriCorps Vista. I'm Connie Miller from Free Meal Program in Connie's Kitchen. So Connie, how did the meals program begin? It started about 13 years ago. Um, it was called Community Meals. It was kind of overseen by Love, Inc., and there were several area churches involved. Then last year, it kind of all changed. Last year, yeah, last year everything changed. That, that program basically stopped for, I don't know, months, I guess. But then we, we became Free Meals, and we never stopped. So how did COVID impact the free meals? Well, that kind of is what caused the break. Um, we had served in the church on a Wednesday night. We talked to our guests and the team because we knew something was coming. And we all agreed we were going to carry on. Well, the next morning I got a call saying it's a suspended program. And I said, well, I've got a key to the church and I'm just going to keep going. 
So I did, and that first week, it was just Chris and I out in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, I cooked at home, and then I started getting angry calls and texts from the team saying, why didn't you call me? And everybody came back. The cook teams from the other churches didn't come back, so we cooked every week. And just kind of went from there. And that's been, what, like 18, 19 months? Wow. So what is the best way the community can support the meals program? Call me. You can volunteer, you can donate. We need cash right now to buy, we're buying a lot of groceries. We're spending about six to $700 a week right now. And the need is, is plateaued right now, but we are forecasting a spike over the next few weeks. But as, just to give an idea, you know, in the past year and a half, we have collected about $25,000 in donations. We're starting to run out now. And we have served, conservatively as of July 1st, over 9,000 meals. And that doesn't even address the groceries, the milk, the bread, the eggs, all the produce. Produce <laughs> doesn't even address that, so. Well, that's amazing, Connie. We're glad to see how much you've been able to help the community through the meals program and look forward to seeing what you do next. Well, it's, I, I am honestly just the one that wouldn't say no, but it's the team. And you know, because you're part of that team. And I want to say to AmeriCorps and Four County, thank you for sending this young man to us. And he's coming back. He's done with the program, but he's coming back to us. You have been invaluable. Thank you. Invaluable. We packed 1,400 and some eggs together one day. So we do, we do everything. So yeah, call me if you want to volunteer, if you want to donate. Uh, there's no such thing as a small donation, and we don't say no to anybody who has a heart to volunteer. So call me, 248-933-4579. Thank you. No, thank you. Every year, distracted drivers are responsible for nearly 2.5 million car crashes. The National Safety Council reports cell phone use while driving leads to 1.6 million crashes. The NSC reports one out of every four car accidents in the United States is caused by texting and driving. Texting or reading text takes your eyes off the road for at least five seconds. How you doing, ma'am? So if you were traveling at 55 miles per hour, you're essentially driving the length of an entire football field blindfolded. Once a driver has been distracted, it takes only three seconds for a car crash to occur. Thank you for coming today. I hope you enjoyed your practice. Leaving every day a little bit better than when we started. I hope to see you next week. Join us on our next episode. Have a good night. Namaste.